and we need to make sure that there are tax incentives for people to build houses, to rent these houses out, and therefore to increase the offer. So that's our strategy. Twenty twenty three is a double election year here in Luxembourg. We just had the really intriguing results from the municipal elections, and the question is what lessons can we learn from those that might give us some indication of how the national elections will pan out in November? Now, who better to ask being joined today by the top of the list from the CSV party, Luke Frieden. Luke, welcome. Hello, thank you. Sorry, I'm English. I call you CSV rather than CSV, as I know most people call you here. Sorry about that. Um, now, firstly, uh, I understand. That t so today's big centre right party. Yeah, yeah centre right. So, yeah. Big day today. You just gave the list in to the court, did you? So this means it's official. You're top of the list. Yes, we were the first one to publish our program. We are now the first ones to present the list to the, the tribunal, the court, where everybody has to file their lists, and we did that today. So it's oh, done. Oh, that must be a relief. So it's official. <laughs> You're top of the list now. Uh, for people who are outside of Luxembourg, they've always known that your party is the biggest party, yeah. uh, electorally speaking, isn't it, in the country, but not been in power for more than a decade. So the million dollar question is, is there a pathway for you to become the prime minister at the next election? I think there's a pathway for my party to come back to government because uh, people must know that in Luxembourg, the voting system is such that there will always be coalition governments. So there has been one coalition of socialists, liberals and greens for 10 years. And there's quite, there are quite a number of problems that are in this country, like housing, like taxation that went up, uh, like health where there are more waiting times to have access to, um, uh, to any kind of uh, services. So I think there are quite a lot of problems. And these three, government, these three parties in government do not share the same view on the possible solutions. And I think that's where we want to come in and present, present solutions to solve these issues. Right, but here's the catch. Coalition governments may mean that you yourselves are looking at having to be in some sort of coalition. Is that possible? Of course. I think for me the most important is to find solution to these uh, problems and therefore we need a coherent policy for this country and therefore it's not only about running for the top job in the country, it's more, first of all, to make sure that uh, some of these key items that we have top on our list will be implemented. But as the C CSV, but coalition. you're the centre-right yeah. party, your natural partner seems to be the DP. Is that correct? We have been in government with uh, the Social Democrats and we have been in government with the Liberals. And I think at the end of the day, it's the voters who decide. But then thereafter, there needs to be to coalition talks. And for me, what is relevant to enter government is that on the key issues, like increasing the purchasing power of the people, i.e. reducing the taxes, um, or uh, making sure that more houses, more apartments are being built, that there we find a common ground with the potential coalition partner. And as we are a big party of the center, I think we can work together with other democratic parties in this country. Now let's talk about housing. Uh, it's a hot topic and I would say that actually all political parties know that there's a problem, but how are we actually going to unlock the country and build more houses? Yeah, well you say all parties know that there's a problem. They have been in power for 10 years and they didn't solve the problem. So that's why new solutions are necessary. We believe that we need to build faster. We need to reduce the procedures therefore for having the building permits and so on. In the cities we need to build a little bit higher, uh, we need uh, to build a little bit more dense, so more houses on the same uh, areas. And then within the, um, the, within the cities we should uh, try to get rid of all the uh, environmental compensation measures. You know, these are very important to keep the nature around the cities, but in the cities we need to build faster. And we need to make sure that there are tax incentives for people to build houses, to rent these houses out, and therefore to increase the offer. So that's our strategy. I mean, it's interesting. To see, I mean, I know that you're a financial guy. You know more about it than I do. But uh, we've got high interest rates. Yes. And I actually spoke to the president of Lux Royale in this room last week. And he said, actually, we're going the wrong way. Uh, we're looking at a situation where less houses are being built, not more. Uh, because the government took measures that did not encourage people to invest in, in real estate. They increased the VAT, 
they um, uh, limited the, the rent that people uh, can ask that rent out their apartments. So all these measures were not very encouraging for people to invest in real estate. But the state as well must also build social housing. Uh, you know, Singapore, other places managed to do that. We have a, a strong increase in the population. So we need to offer houses to these people. And that is the key priority next to increasing the purchasing power because the two are of course linked a little bit. If you have to spend half of your salary or even more on paying the rent or reimbursing the loan, that's simply too much. That should be one third. And therefore we need to decrease the taxes so that people have more net at the end of the month to Wh spend. Which taxes would you decrease? I think income tax needs to be uh, reduced and we need to to encourage people to invest in a certain direction, that is the digital transformation, the environmental transformation, so that can be done by subsidies or, or taxes, so that they have more uh, renewable energy and taxation can help achieving this goal faster. Now, once again, it's, it's interesting. I mean, there's a clear divide between your party and the LSAP, for example, that seems to be lobbying for people to work less they somehow think that the country can become more productive even if we are working less. Do you agree with that? No. I, I think in some areas that might be possible, uh, but that needs to be negotiated between the companies or the employers and the employees, the unions. Um, and in some areas that might work, in others it, it won't work. So therefore we think that should not be the law that sets the number of uh, working hours. We will keep it at 40, but even a certain area people agree to work only 38 or 36, that's fine, but it should not be for the state to decide that. When you looked at the previous tripartite negotiations about the index, uh, you must have been shuddering because it ended up having to have three indexes this year, which feels quite painful for the business sort of community. What's your response for the index in the, f in the future? We believe that we need to keep the indexation of salaries because it's part of the social peace and the stability of this country. Even for people that earn more than 100,000 euros a year? Yes, because uh, taxation will, uh, uh, will be the regulator in, in that aspect. But what is most important in our program is that if there are more than one index per year, two, three, like uh, as we had in, in, in this year, then, or last year, then we think that there should be, and we commit to that, then there should be a tripartite negotiation to find solutions that make sure that people have enough purchasing power while at the same time take into account the competitiveness of the companies. Because for us, that is the key element. We need competitive companies to survive and to keep our standard of living. We've done okay from a competition point of view, some people would argue, in this past decade. I mean, if you look at the no, startup, startup scene, We've got quite a, a you know an active, vibrant startup community, haven't we? I think in some areas we have lost competitiveness vis-à-vis -vis Dublin, London in the financial uh, services sector. So we are doing rather well, but we could do better. You know, if you look at the most recent competitiveness index, we went down from uh, uh, some six places, I think. So that's not idea. We should be where Denmark is, where Netherlands are, where other countries are within Europe. So I think we need to become more competitive uh, to have good jobs and good salaries in those uh, companies and to avoid that companies move outside of Luxembourg. And that's a key element to keep also our social policy, because if you don't earn the money first, you cannot distribute it. Now, for my Luxembourgish friends who know the country even better than I do, they tell me that the challenge for the CSV is redefining itself in the post Juncker years. Do you feel that the party struggled to redefine itself? And what, what is your vision for the party going forward? I think that was only at the very beginning of the post Juncker years. But I think now we have a very clear program to make sure that economy, social policy and ecology work hand in hand and to find the right balance between the three and that I think differentiates us from other parties running in these elections. Thank you very much. That was Luke Frieden who is the top of the list and potential candidate for the Prime Minister in the elections in November. Thank you. Thank you.